From the theater at Madison Square Garden, it's HBO's Boxing After Dark. Tonight, two fights in the featherweight division, featuring some of the best and most exciting young talents in the sport. We'll get things started with Cuban sensation, Yoriakis Gamboa, putting his undefeated record on the line against hard-nosed veteran Roger M. Tagua of Tanzania. Then in our main event, slick boxing veteran Steven Luevano risks his 126-pound title belt against undefeated Puerto Rican star Juan Manuel Lopez. Hello again, everyone. So glad you could join us for HBO's Boxing After Dark. I'm Bob Pop. We've got a great two action fight set up for you here tonight. You don't want to miss it. Talented young fighters, both in the 126 pound weight class in which both bouts will be contested. A very intriguing weight class. To tell us more about it, we welcome in HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman. And Mac, we're going to see two fights tonight in the featherweight division that could be really explosive in a division that's loaded with talent. Several years ago, we saw a golden age of featherweights. We may not be there right now, but there are some interesting fighters. Here are the belt holders. Chris John, the longest reigning, most legitimate of the belt holders, but was almost knocked out, it seemed, late in his fight against Rocky Juarez most, in his most recent fight. Stephen Leveno, who you're going to see tonight, belt holder, a real good fighter. The question is, is he already an old 28? Cristobal Cruz has had an up and down career, a winding kind of career. At the moment, it's up. Rojas, a streaking Dominican fighter who seemed to be on a roll, but has been on the shelf as of late. And here are some of the real potential stars of the division who you're going to see tonight. Gamboa, um, among the very most talented uh, athletes in boxing. Juan Manuel Lopez, a real blue chipper. Caballero actually fights at 122 pounds, but he's almost six feet tall, and he's been calling out Lopez. Well, Max, you mentioned your York Escambo, who we'll see tonight. 16-0 with 14 knockouts, a former Olympic champion from Cuba. His road to the United States and his road to stardom has not been a road paved with gold. Cuba, the communist island nation just 90 miles from the Florida coast, is known for many things. Exquisite beauty, withering poverty, and its passion for boxing. Yuriokis Gamboa, born in Guantanamo, is the latest graduate of its storied amateur boxing program. And like so many of his countrymen, he was introduced to the sport by his father. Gamboa's boxing journey began in Cuba, at a place like this. They call it La Finca. We call it La Finca because it's like a school, only for boxing, which is in the middle of a forest. Gamboa blossomed into a four-time Cuban national champion and brought home Olympic gold from the 2004 Games in Athens. But traveling internationally allowed Gamboa and his teammates to see the world in a way they never had before. Nos fuimos dando cuenta de que nosotros merecíamos más de lo que teníamos. Siempre y cuando dábamos todo lo que teníamos que dar por una victoria por nuestro país. And on an island where poverty reigns, an Olympic gold medal has more practical uses. La vendí por por para ir a hacerle cumpleaños a mi hija, el cual ya Brenda tenía un año y yo cumplí el año. Todo el mundo va a reconocer por todo lo mientras viva y mientras esté presente que voy a ser campeón olímpico. Pero yo, mi hija no le podía explicar allá después. No, no te hice un cumpleaños, no te hice una fiesta en cumpleaños porque no tenía dinero. Preferí eh, aceptar la oferta que me estaban dando, 1,500 dólares. By 2006, Gamboa had had enough and secretly met with Miami attorney Tony Gonzalez. From July 06 till December 06, it was, you know, I'd say two, three times a week that we spoke for the next five months. He spoke in code a lot over the phone. They're very paranoid that they're tapping in on their phone conversations, stuff like that. I would imagine it's very traumatic 
you know, and they're always over, looking over their shoulders. In December of that year, Gamboa and two fellow Cuban boxing gold medalists made their move, defecting from a boxing tournament in Venezuela to neighboring Colombia. Three months later, they were in the United States. Y estaban dejando atrás, madre, hijo, padre, etc. Sabes que po podía, finalmente tú no sabías si esto podía ser fructífero o podía ser una lamentación para el resto de tu vida. So far, Gamboa's gamble is paying off just fine. After turning pro and living in Germany for a year, Gamboa returned to Miami where his career has taken off. He's undefeated in 16 fights with 14 knockouts and is considered one of the most promising and exciting young fighters in the sport. Personally, he's been able to help his daughter, brother and father escape the oppressive poverty in Cuba, having relocated them to his new home in Miami. Though the scars left behind by a lifetime of oppression in Cuba run deep, Gamboa has just one wish to someday make the 90-mile journey home again. A lot of people don't understand is that they never know if they're going to ever go back home. He's considered a traitor to the country. It's a big, big burden. Well, from the mecca of amateur boxing, Cuba, to the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden in New York, we welcome an HBO boxing analyst, Lennox Lewis. Lennox, I want you to talk a little bit about the transition that Gamboa's had to make. He's 16-0 and 0 as a pro. You were a prized amateur as well, like Gamboa was. Gamboa has made the transition. How difficult is it to go from the amateur style to the pro style? And what do you think of Gamboa's progress so far? Well, it's very difficult in the one sense. You have to empty your cup. Everything that you know as an amateur, you basically have to put that aside and take up a new cup, and that's professionals. One thing about the professionals is you can take your time, there's a lot more time, and you settle down behind your punches. Settling down behind your punches means placing your punches. There's no rush to put it all in three rounds. But I think his transition's done quite well. He's doing quite well. Yeah, 16-0 with 14 knockouts on his resume. Well, on the other side of the coin, Max Kellerman, we get a look at Rogers Amtagua from Tanzania. Now, when you fight this guy, it's like undergoing a root canal. I mean, he's going to make you work and work and work. Not for the uh, audience, thankfully, though. It's a lot of fun to watch him fight. Tell me if you've heard this one before. Philadelphia club fighter with double-digit losses gets a shot at the title and then almost wins by knockout in the last round only to lose a decision. Of course, this is real life, and Mtagwa, the real-life Rocky, is actually from Tanzania and fights at featherweight, isn't a heavyweight, doesn't get the same kind of fanfare, and doesn't get a rematch with a champ. Instead, he gets a fight here tonight with Yuri Orcas Gamboa, maybe an even more scintillating fighter than Juan Manuel Lopez. Once again, M. Tagua, who's used to being in these kind of fights of the year type fights, has his work cut out for him. Well, Max, let's take a look at the tail of the tape for the first battle of the evening between Gamboa and M. Tagua. M. Tagua, 30 years of age, the height the same, the arm length, well, you got a one-inch advantage for Amtagua. Here's the interesting aspect, Gamboa at 126 pounds. This fight is contracted for 126 pounds. Amtagua weighed in at just 122 and a half, and he told us during the fighter meetings, I eat what I eat when I want to eat. He obviously didn't eat a lot in order to get up to 126 pounds. That's not against the rules, as we welcome in Harold Letterman, our unofficial ringside scorer. The Yuri Yorkis Gamboa Roger Amtagua fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Bob, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Bob! And there is Roger Mtagwa fighting out of Philadelphia. Max, really interesting story. Came to the United States in 2000. Most people know him as Rogers Mtagwa. Someone just threw an S on his name and it stuck. In fact, his birth date is actually different than what it is on his passport. It's October 9th. His real birth date is in March. He's 30 years of age, but the guy is just all about boxing. Every time I've seen him, I've thought, wow, if he were considered a world-class fighter, 
He, this fight that he's in right now would be considered a fight of the year, but he's really just a, a notch below that. Meanwhile, against Lopez, he proved he can be a world-class fighter, and many people did think that his fight last year against Lopez was the fight of the year. All he does is train and work out, and he's really kind of dedicated himself to his craft. He came to the United States without a penny in his pocket because he said the United States is the mecca of boxing. And he went to Philadelphia because of the great history there. And here he is fighting at the theater at Madison Square Garden tonight in a defining fight after coming through in grand fashion in his last fight. That last fight was right here in the theater at Madison Square Garden against Juan Manuel Lopez. And Mtagua was really a guy in this fight that most people dismissed. The fight was at 122 pounds. You know, here's just a guy that's going to come into the ring and he's going to be an opponent. But as it turned out, it was not the case that night. As we take a look at some of the highlights of that fight, and early on, well, Mtagua was kind of playing the part. Like many pressure fighters, he has a tendency to start slow. It takes him a while to start smoking. Uh, and so early on, it looked like a mismatch, as people thought it would be. Lopez, with the shorter, crisper, more accurate shots, was dominating the boxing match. But as the fight went on, and it turned increasingly to a contest of wills, and Pagua was able to impose his largely, especially here in the 11th, he hurt Lopez badly, and throughout the 12th, looked like he was on the verge of a knockout win. And it's just the sheer will of Lopez able to stay up and deal with all that pressure. And at the end of the day, M. Tagua won a lot of votes for the boxing public as a viable guy. And that's why we're here tonight. Let's see how Gamboa does against the guy that Lopez just struggled against. Your Yorkis Gamboa, 28 years of age, 16 and 0, 14 knockouts. Lennox, when you watch a guy like Gamboa fight, he's got the hand speed, he's got power, he's got all the tools that are necessary. It'll be interesting to see how he deals with what Antagua brings to the table, and that's a ruggedness trying to extend the fight late. That's the big question mark, isn't it? Well, it's a question mark because you box all kinds of different fighters, and this fighter uh, will definitely test your heart and test your soul. But, you know, he's tailor-made for... Um, Gamboa, yeah. Yeah, Gamboa, and Gamboa is going to use his speed and try and move around him. And I've always said you can't hit what you can't catch. So, uh, Agua has a, a great work in front of him. Well, Gamboa's got all the hand speed. He's got all the movement in and out. The question is, Will Amtagua be able to get Gamboa to fight the fight that he needs, or will Gamboa be able to dictate the terms? We're going to find out over the span of 12 rounds. Let's send it up to the ring for tonight's ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the theater, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA, where tonight, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated is proud to present HBO Boxing After Dark, a doubleheader evening of World Championship Boxing, sponsored by Tecate Cerveza Con Character and the event Pacquiao versus Clotty, live on HBO Pay-Per-View from Cowboys Stadium, Dallas, Texas on March 13th and the Clinton Bush Haiti Fund, starting tonight. For every ticket sold to every top-ranked boxing event in the entire year of 2010, a dollar donation goes to the fund. Do your part. Go to ClintonBushHaitiFund.org. These ballots are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. This next one presented in association with Arena Box and Pelts Boxing. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Tom Schreck, Nelson Vasquez, and Steve Weisfeld. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Steve Smoker. And now, from Madison Square Garden, New York City, let's get this party started! 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a white with black official weight, 122 one half pounds. His professional record, 25 victories, including 18 knockouts. 
13 defeats with two draws. Originally from Dodoma, Tanzania. Now living and fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the challenger, Rogers. The tiger, Tagawa. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white, blue, and red, official weight, 126 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 16 fights. 16 victories, including 14 knockouts. Originally from Guantanamo, Cuba. Now fighting and training out of Miami, Florida. The reigning, defending, undefeated WBA featherweight champion of the world, El Ciclón de Guantanamo. Yuri Yorki Scamboa! Gentlemen, you were given your instructions both in Spanish and English. Entienden las reglas. Todo bien? Protect yourself at all times, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself. Touch gloves. God bless you both. Tonight is supposed to set up a big ready? little fight between Gamboa and Juan Outside. Manuel Lopez, who you will see later tonight. Ready? Will Gamboa Tommy. come out of this okay, fight baby. with a more impressive win against Mtagua than Give Lopez did? Or can Mtagua upset the apple cart by weathering the early storm that is sure to come from Gamboa? TV all set to go. Ready? Scheduled for 12. And we are underway. Tagua throws out the first punch. A jab that's blocked by Gamboa. Hand speed, obviously, the edge to Gamboa. And Tagua says one of the things that hurt him early, good left hand by Gamboa in his fight against Lopez, that he had hurt his ankle two weeks before the fight. Says he's gotten in good work and gotten his run in every day. Feels he'll get stronger as the fight goes on. Gamboa countered. If he thinks he'll get stronger, it's a mistake. I'll break him down. I don't think it's going to be a long fight. We'll see. Lennox, we're about a minute into the first round. Both guys seem pretty relaxed. Seem pretty relaxed. Gamboa is caught in Togba with a lot of punches oh, and hand. actually hurt him with that punch. Right and then the left hurt M. Togba. Suffered two knockout losses in, in his career back in 06 and 04. Gamboa has been on the canvas, although he's undefeated. Four times he's been down. Gamboa is you know at the upper limit of athleticism you can see in terms of the speed and the punching power and the reflexes he's in his physical prime he also has an incredible amateur pedigree um, but so far in his career the hole has been somewhat less than the sum of its parts here we see him in his last several fights fighting more discipline than he normally does and trying to fight as you mentioned lennox at the top of the show in a more professional style the thing what I noticed is a, a speed difference and a reflex difference in Gamboa. Gamboa is just catching him with certain punches where he can't he can't even see it. And Togba is trying to catch him, but you know it's difficult to catch what you can't can't find. And he can't find Gamboa right now. Lennox, that counter left hand from Gamboa is one of the punches that and Togwa just doesn't seem to be able to handle. There's a good left to the body by Gamboa. See the power punch has landed so far in the round according to the box. 12-3 in favor of Gamboa. Pretty definitive round for Yorkus Gamboa. And down goes Mtagwa, putting an exclamation five, point on it. Six. And it's interesting. Seven, Every time Mtagwa right, tries to mount a punch, he gets hit because he's not seeing the punch coming. The punch is coming at a great speed and velocity. 
Big first round for Yorkus Gamboa. I feel. Okay. Hey, give me, give me my foot. Hey, what a bucket, what a bucket, what a bucket. What a bucket, what a bucket, what a spin bucket. Don't panic, Bobby. Relax. I got it, I got it, Joe. Remember, Dona Javi comes with that double jab. You can't stay back. You gotta go off to the side. Now, with that hand, with that hand that you're working, just like you started now, you're not gonna have any problems at all. He's down. And here we're gonna see a, a left hand high to the head. Left hook, boom. By Gamboa. And the left hand was a money punch for him, Lennox, all yeah. around. Here's, here's another look. Was he more off balance than necessarily hurt there? He was a little bit off balance, but that was a good punch. According to the CompuBox numbers, Gamboa landed 14 of 29 power shots of his 15 connects. So if you're in the corner of Mtagua, what do you do to stop? The left hands and then the right from Gambo as he steps in. Left Ooh. hand right to the face by Gamboa. Combination to the head. Chops a right hand. Break, 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 and Mtagwa ties break, break. him up. Mtagwa's style is made for Gambo because he's right there to be hit. The only question in this fight is can Mtagwa survive these moments early because he does really come on strong as the fight wears on. This well, fight may not be able to wear on if it continues to go like this. I know, different styles, different fights. This man, he hasn't even hit yet. And he's, and he's getting caught some powerful punches, some good hooks. Just a minute, 10 seconds into the round, Gamboa's landed 17 of 24 power shots according to CompuBox. Combination tattoos Mtagwa again. Mtagwa drops his hands after he throws a punch, and that's very dangerous for a man like this. Oh, like, left, this right. is what I'm telling you. Hurt him. He threw a combination, and his hands are down. And he's definitely hurt in this round. So whether he can weather the storm or not, this is a question. Good left hand to the body, right to the chin. Down goes Mtagwa. This is when Gamboa Six, really took his time seven, and he placed eight, his punches. One more time, come on now. And that's the result of it. Plenty of time in round two. Gamboa's too sharp right now. Target practice for the Cyclone of Guantanamo. Tagua wings one right, walks into another left again. He's right. not seeing that left. And he did not react well to that left hook. He blinked and looked like he was in, like really hurt by the shot. Tagua needs to hold on now. He's at a great disadvantage right Good now. Stoppage. Good stoppage. Good no stoppage by referee Steve no Slover. Baby. No more, baby. No more. All right. And a sensational performance from Gamboa. Too sharp, too quick. Too powerful. Third time Mtagwa has been stopped in his career. This is a situation where he was totally outclassed. Just never had an answer for that left hand. It was too fast. Gamboa closed the show, hitting 38 of 58 power shots, 66%. But the speed, Lennox, the accuracy, sitting down on his punches, and even more polished-looking Yoriorkis Gamboa. So Gamboa gets win number 17. Here's the first knockdown in round number two. Lennox left hand to the body, and then a left right to the chin and a right cross. That, that shows how fast he hit him with five punches, and Motagua had his hand left hand out. Here's another look at it. One. It's fast and slow motion. Five punches, five punch combination. 
Unbelievable. And it was target practice for Gamboa. And here's a look at the stoppage. And he was hurt, you know, not only going down, but he had taken a left hand before that. And Gamboa was just able to tee off and pick him apart. And Steve Smoger did the right thing to step in and stop it as Yoriorkis Gamboa gets win number 17 and stoppage number 15. The official time of the stoppage, we send it once again up to the ring and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes and 35 seconds of round number two. The winner by knockout victory, still undefeated, the fighting pride of Guantanamo, Cuba, El Ciclón de Guantanamo, Yorkes Gambo. Pretty awesome performance by Gamboa at 235 of round number two. He put Amtagua on the canvas three times in the fight, once late in round number one and twice in round number two. As we take a look at the final punch numbers and you'll see the total punches. Gamboa at 50 percent. Amtagua at 18 percent. I mean Gamboa landed almost as many as Amtagua was able to even throw on the power punches were impressive 38 of 58 in the second round with the power punches for 66 percent. He was at just under 50 percent in round number one so a total of 60 percent 52 of 87 it was the left it was the right it was easy for Yorkus Gamboa and he's standing by in the ring with Max Kellerman sensational performance your thoughts on that fight. <laughs> Pensé darle uno más, unos rounds más y a partir del cuarto round apretar, pero. Se... Well, you know, truthfully, I couldn't show all that I had, and I was hoping to get to the fourth round and then really show uh, what I came with, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't there. It seemed that tonight, and in your last fight, you've been concentrating on fighting a more disciplined kind of fight. Can you talk about that? Bueno, realmente, como ya había dicho anteriormente que estaban trabajando y más y yo con respecto a todas estas cosas y eficiencia que hemos arrastrado de la Mateo hasta el profesional. As I said, I've been trying to improve all of these deficiencies and we've improved it and we've tried to erase them. After Juan Manuel Lopez's struggles with Amtagua, what statement did you make with that kind of a performance just now? Bueno, realmente eh, se está tratando de dos ahora diferentes, de dos categorías distintas. Two different boxers, two different categories, and you can't compare Juan Manuel Lopez and Yuri Gamboa. But we hope to be able to compare you both should Lopez win tonight in the not too distant future. What are your thoughts of fighting Lopez should he win tonight? Bueno, realmente es una decisión que lo toman los promotores. Yo estoy preparado para cualquier boxeador que quiera enfrentarse conmigo. It's in the hands of the promoters, and I'm ready for whatever boxer is in front of me. Congratulations and thank you. Bob. Impressive performance by Yuri Orkis Gambo. We're in the Mecca of Boxing, New York City, the theater at Madison Square Garden.